In this video, we're going to talk about tangents to level curves. So, our example is going to be the Cobb Douglas production function. So, consider Q of KL is equal to 2K to the 3 fourths, L to the 1 fourth. A local curve. is obtained by considering a particular value for this function. So we set this function in terms of k and l equal to 100 and this defines a level curve. Now, this is a level curve, not a local curve. A level curve is, is done by that. Now a point on this curve is k naught l naught is equal to 50, 50. And you can verify that pretty readily. The next function, or the next question we ask is, is there an implicit function L of K around this point? Right, I've got a level curve, I've got a point on that level curve, is there an implicit function? Because of the implicit function theorem, we know that we only have to compute the partial derivative of Q with respect to L. And as long as that's not zero, there is such a function. Well, it turns out that the, uh, the derivative is pretty simple to compute. We'll uh, take a derivative partial with respect to L of Q, and it'll only affect this term. We'll get a negative 3 fourths, so 1 fourth will come out, we get a 1 half. And now we have 50 to the 3 fourths times 50 to the negative 3 fourths, which is equal to 1 half, which is not 0. So, there is a C1 function L of K. That's by the implicit function theorem. Well, we can also go ask what is the slope of the tangent line at L naught, K naught. Well, it's pretty, pretty straightforward to compute. First, we uh, we take a derivative with respect to K, partial with respect to K, of 100. So basically, we're going to take a partial derivative of this equation, where now we're going to substitute in uh, our implicit function. Well, this is going to be also equal to, so of course this guy is going to be equal to zero. That guy is just a constant, that's equal to zero. And now we considered the partial of Q evaluated at K and L of K, right? So for any value K around K naught, this is valid. And we just use the chain rule. So this is D Q dk, 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 plus dq, dl, dl, dk. And now we just have to solve for this partial derivative here. 
we know this is equal to zero, so solving for dl dk at 50, that is at that particular k naught, we have its negative dq dk evaluated at the point 50, 50, divide by dq dl evaluated at the point 50, 50, which is equal to negative 3 halves over 1 half, which is equal to negative 3. And this quantity, when we compare the production, the partial of the production with respect to k to the partial of production with respect to L at this point, uh, well, it basically says if I change k a little bit, what's the amount that I have to change L in, in a very small amount, right? In a very small change of k. What's the amount that I have to change L to retain the same amount of output? And so for that reason, we call this the marginal rate rate of technical substitution. Technical substitution. So that's a that's simply what that's called in the economics literature. And hence the tangent line, the tangent line is L is equal to slope k minus k naught plus L naught. Plugging in numbers, we have negative 3 k minus 50 plus 50. And that's just the equation of the line in the LK plane. And in particular, the vector 1, negative 3 is tangent to the level curve at 50, 50. Right? If we change k by 1 or k by a small amount, uh, then we have to change L by negative 3 times that same amount. And that is essentially what the tangent is telling us. And this can kind of be simplified in the following theorem. So now we summarize in the following theorem. Let x naught, y naught satisfy g of x naught y naught is equal to some constant c where g of course from r2 into r1 has all first derivatives continuous if dg dy evaluated at x naught y naught does not equal zero, then g of x, y equals c defines a smooth curve through x naught, y naught. And of course, is all which which is all locally true. It may not be a smooth curve all over, but at least at this point, there's a smooth curve, uh, which is locally the best way to think about it is it's locally the graph of a C one function y is equal to f of x. Furthermore, the, 
the slope of this graph of this graph at x naught is exactly negative dg dx evaluate at x naught y naught divide by dg dy evaluated x naught y naught right and so of course we had to have that this partial with respect to y is not zero for that to even make sense now if it were zero however so if my partial with respect to y was zero but my partial with respect to x now does not equal zero then we can still get this curve only now the uh, who, who we can have as a, uh, a function who, who can we have as a variable for a function changes then g of x comma y equals c is still a smooth curve through x naught y naught which is locally the graph of a c1 function x of y so that nicely summarizes everything so if one of these derivatives is not equal to zero then we're in good shape and we can actually construct that graph if both of them are zero we're cooked we can't really say anything about this in general uh, and, and only only in specific cases can we even do anything uh, and so it's really nice to introduce a definition now that'll expand as we understand these things a little better we call the a a point regular a point x not y not is a regular point of a c1 function g of x comma y if the gradient of g evaluated x naught y naught does not equal zero which essentially then boils down to the fact that well the partial derivatives at each of these points cannot equal zero and therefore I can get an implicit curve and I get a smooth curve and I can have it as a graph of a C1 function locally so that's it's really really good to have this notion of regular point just to be able to have a vocabulary for for these kind of things